Hi everybody, welcome to Educating Adventures. My name is Sarah and today we are going to be exploring one of the biggest challenges that animals have to worry about out in the environment. We are going to be learning all about the different strategies and the different adaptations that animals use to help them avoid predators. So let's go ahead and get started. Animals use all sorts of different types of adaptations to help them avoid predators. And an adaptation is something that an animal has or something that an animal does that helps them to survive in their particular environment. So since today we're gonna to be talking all about how animals avoid predators, and predators are animals that hunt other animals, let me give you guys a second here to think about why that might be important for an animal to do in their particular environment. So this is a good time for you to stop the video and discuss as a class why it's important for animals to adapt to survive predators in their environment. Are you ready? So this one should be pretty easy because a really important part of staying alive is not becoming another animal's lunch. In order to survive, you need to be able to avoid all of the different things in the environment that want to eat you. And animals have developed amazing physical and behavioral adaptations that help them to survive these predators. So our physical adaptations, again, are things that animals have that help them to survive and a behavioral adaptation is something that they do. So we're gonna be talking about kind of a bunch of both of those different types of adaptations today. So let's go ahead and look at a couple examples of these incredible adaptations. One very common way that animals avoid becoming lunch is by camouflaging. And camouflaging is when an animal blends in with its environment. So we can think of camouflage as kind of like hiding in plain sight. And if a predator doesn't see you, you have a very small chance of becoming lunch. So there are animals like rattlesnakes whose colors and patterns, they don't change, but they match the environment where they live. So if there's any hawks or eagles flying around, hopefully a rattlesnake will blend into their environment and not be spotted. And then you might think of an animal like a snowshoe hare who lives up in the Arctic where in the winter there's a lot of snow, but in the summer some of that snow melts. So the Arctic hare, the snowshoe hare, actually changes color with the season. In the winter they are a bright white color to help them camouflage with the snow. And in the summer they turn kind of like a brown color to help them blend into some of the dirt and the other dry parts of the ecosystem once all of that snow melts. Chameleons take this one step further. Instead of changing with the season, they are actually able to change their whole bodies at any time to match the environment around them. So if they're in front of a green leaf, they can be green. And then if they're in front of a brown log, they can turn brown. So that color changing ability is incredible camouflage. And then there are a couple animals who use what we call disruptive coloration, which is a type of camouflage where instead of blending into the environment, you kind of blend into the group of animals that you're in. So if we think of a zebra who lives in a big group, all of these zebras have a bunch of stripes. And if you're a predator and you're looking at this whole big group filled with stripes, it can be kind of hard to pick out one specific zebra to hunt. So this disruptive coloration is a special type of camouflage that again, helps these animals avoid predators. Another adaptation that lots of animals will use to avoid predators is being poisonous or venomous. And sometimes we think of these two words meaning the same thing, and they are a lot alike, but a poisonous animal, for them to put their toxin to hurt another animal, they need to be eaten or touched and for an animal who is venomous, they need to inject their toxins either using teeth or a stinger. 
So some examples of a venomous animal might be, again, that rattlesnake that we mentioned before. They have big fangs that inject venom that they use to catch prey themselves, but they can also use that to defend themselves against those hawks that we mentioned before that like to eat them. A lionfish is another example of a venomous animal. They have big spines on their back that when another fish touches or presses down on, it injects those toxins right into whatever might be trying to eat them. A poisonous animal is gonna be something like a poison dart frog who has to be eaten or touched for those poisons to get in that predator. They don't inject that poison into their predators. And the poison dart frogs have really special colors. There's lots of different types of them. They can be a whole bunch of different bright colors. And those bright colors serve as a warning to predators to say, hey, I am dangerous. You do not want to eat me. This rattlesnake that we've mentioned a couple times now kind of seems like the master of avoiding predators. They can use their camouflage to avoid being seen. They can use that venom to defend themselves, but they also offer their predators a warning before they get too close. They shake their rattle to make a loud sound to tell the predators, hey, I'm here and I'm dangerous. You might wanna give me a little bit of space. And those rattles are actually just really funny looking scales. They are made out of keratin, the same thing as the rest of their scales and our fingernails and our hair. And when those keratin rattles bang together, it makes that loud warning sound. Meerkats also use a warning sound, except they make theirs with their voice. Meerkats live in big groups, so when there's a predator around, if one meerkat sees the predator, they can set out that warning call and all the other meerkats will know there's danger and they can run to safety in their shelters, their burrows. And shelters are another great way that animals avoid becoming lunch. So animals like the meerkats or prairie dogs, if there's a predator in the area, they can escape down into their burrows where they're safe. Even fish use protection to avoid being eaten by bigger fish or sharks. In a coral reef, fish hide in all the little crevices of the reef, especially at nighttime when sharks are out to hunt them. These fish also find protection by living in large groups. If you think about a lot of different types of animals that live in large groups, like fish or flamingos, all live in these big groups, if there's a predator around and you're alone as a flamingo, it's going to be a lot easier for that predator to pick you out and catch you. But if you're in a big group with lots of other flamingos, the odds of you being the one who gets eaten are a lot smaller. So there are safety in numbers. This is a great behavioral adaptation that animals use to avoid predators. So again, we might think of an animal like a wildebeest or all the different types of gazelles a lot of times live in really big groups. And so do elephants. And elephants are amazing. They have this great family structure in the groups where they live. They actually all work together to protect all of the young elephants that are traveling in their groups. So just like elephants work together to protect their young, some animals have developed adaptations that allow them to protect themselves. And a very obvious one that we can think of is a porcupine. Porcupines are covered in quills, which are actually just funny looking hairs that are pointed. And when there is danger around, porcupines can raise up their quills and shake them, again, to kind of make that sound, that warning sound. And if the predator gets too close, they can't shoot their quills like some people think they can, but they can run as fast backwards as they can forwards. So they can run backwards at their predators and stick them with their quills and hopefully that hurts enough for the predator to say, you know what, I think I'm gonna go find my lunch somewhere else. There's also a very cool snake called a spitting cobra that uses venom just like the rattlesnakes that we mentioned before, but their kind of superpower is that instead of using their venom to bite in to other animals, which they can do, 
they also can shoot the venom out of their mouths. So if there's a predator coming at them, they can shoot the venom out and hopefully get it in the predator's eyes or nose or mouth and make them really uncomfortable and give that cobra an opportunity to slither away to safety. Some of these adaptations that these animals use to avoid predators have become so successful that other animals have actually started to mimic or copy these same adaptations. And so we call this mimicry, when one animal kind of pretends to be like another animal to help them do something in their environment. In this case, to avoid a predator. So we mentioned before the poison dart frogs. They have these really bright colors to warn predators that they are dangerous so the predators will leave them alone. But there is a frog called a mimic poison frog. And these guys have bright colors just like the poison dart frogs, except they are not nearly as poisonous or as dangerous, but they're tricking predators into thinking that they are so those predators will go find their food somewhere else. There's also a snake called a mountain king snake that we sometimes find here in Arizona. And these guys look a lot like a venomous coral snake. So even though the mountain king snake is not venomous and doesn't really have a lot to defend themselves, predators often think that they are a coral snake, which is dangerous. And for a lot of times, the mountain king snake ends up avoiding the predator by tricking them into thinking that they are more dangerous than they actually are. There is also an amazing group of butterflies that we call owl butterflies because they have large eye spots on their wings. And eye spots are just big spots that animals have that are kind of designed to look like fake eyes and make animals either look bigger than they are or to confuse predators into figuring out which end of the animal is actually their head where the eyes are. So for owl butterflies, those big eye spots look like the eyes of a large owl. And all the little birds that like to eat butterflies, they are not gonna try to eat an owl. So those eye spots, again, help those butterflies avoid becoming lunch. Animals like a butterfly fish also use an eye spot to help kind of confuse predators and hopefully they'll be like, you know what, I'm gonna go find food somewhere else. Animals have developed some really incredible adaptations to help them avoid predators. And we said this is super important, right? A big part of staying alive is not getting eaten. So all of these amazing adaptations have really become successful for these animals in helping them stay alive. I hope you guys had some fun today learning all about the different ways that animals avoid predators. And I hope that we see you next time at our next educating adventure.